In FeatureCam 2015, a new sequence option has been added to the Isoline and Flowline Toolpath Surface Control tab to allow different ordering options for the toolpath direction. These toolpaths can now be set to work from the outside in or the inside out of the surface, as well as still having the default behaviour of working from the first or last column or row. This gives more control to the toolpath direction. Now in this particular case we've got a core plate and I've got a number of different operations that have already been pre-created. First of all we have an initial roughing and we have a groove operation. The groove incidentally is cutting these two grooves in the top of the component. Let's go ahead and just do a quick 3D simulation just to see what the current state of the stock is. So there I have my initial roughing, then have my rest roughing operation working its way down through the material. and then finally the two grooves. At this stage I'm going to go to my view simulation and I'm going to choose to use these as the starting point. I'm going to turn off those two first operations and we're going to concentrate on these isoline toolpaths. First one is for the lower sections. Now in this case we can see we've got these lower sections that we've uh, selected on either side. If I choose Control 4 just to look at the view here, you can see we've got surface continuously sort of moving in this case negative Y or positive Y and in all cases they're moving in positive Z. So as we cut this surface what we want to do is start from this side and this side and work our way across the material. In this case the default uh, machining option for Isoline is going to be ideal because this will start from a particular row or column and work its way across the material. We can control this accordingly. If I turn off the shading just so we can make this a bit clearer, I'm going to look at the isoline operation, go into the surface control, and you can see here in all cases we're cutting columns, but we're cutting the last column for these two surfaces. You can see the arrow starting from the lower part like so. And for the other surfaces, again, if I select, you can see here we're cutting first column for both of those. So in each case we're working our way up through the material, which is a more ideal cutting condition for this part. To verify this we can do a 3D simulation, I'm just going to drop the speed down slightly. Remember our simulation will start after the roughing operation. So just doing an Alt F3 you can see the tool comes in, engages material and starts working its way up through the part like so. We can play that through, increase the speed and you can see we're working way up. So that's the ideal cutting condition for these surfaces. In this case, again, I'm going to add this to my simulation process. Just by going to View, Simulation, and again use those as a starting point. We get to the next section. So the next section we're interested in is this center section. Here you can see the surface like so. Again, if I do a Control 4, and just refresh the view, you can see we've got this curved surface, but you can see we've got a lower portion at each side of the surface working our way up to a peak. In this case, starting from one side or the other, we're always going to be cutting across the material and in this case working our way into the material on this side. What we ideally want to do is start from the lower portions and work our way towards the centre. The new options allow us to do this. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just have a look at this operation. Go to the Isoline and go to the Surface Control tab. And again, I'm just going to turn off the shading. And here you can see at the moment we've got the default location of the sequence item. So if I was to play that as a centerline simulation, you can see this is not the ideal condition. So working our way across the material, like so. So to instigate the change, we go to the next one, go to the isoline, look at the surface control, and you can see this one has the sequence item has been changed from out to in. We can change the sequence item just by clicking the sequence button. We have none, we have in to out, which you can see the arrow moves to the center, and back to out to in. The arrow location is similar to the, uh, the none location, but of course the toolpath motion will be different because it will start from the, each of the outer segments. I can verify this if I turn that off and just play a centerline simulation. You can see the shape of the toolpath is starting from the outside regions and working its way towards the center. This is a much more ideal cutting condition for this particular surface. 
Again, go into my 3D simulation, just dropping the speed down a touch. Playing this, you can see it works this way from the outside in towards the centre. And again, just speeding this up, we get our toolpath like so. For in to out, we could have exactly the same. So again, going for the left sections this time, you can see in this case we've got two regions, shallow regions here. Again, going to the default, in this case setting none, you can see the arrows are starting at the edges like so. If I again play the centerline simulation, you see they're working across the surfaces. So to change this, we go back into that surface control tab. In this case, we set out, uh, in to out, so the toolpath is starting at the center and work its way from the inside out towards the edge of the material. Again, dropping the speed of the simulation down, playing center line, you'll see it starts at the center, bit by bit works its way out towards the edge of the material. Speed up the simulation, we get something like that. You can verify this on the 3D simulation by showing it like so. These changes are also available in Isoline, in flow line, sorry. So in this case you can see I've got a flow line, and in this case I've got a surface, an extra surface on the top. Let's turn the shading on so we can see that. So this surface, we're using the longitudinal and laterals of the definition of this surface to project onto the entire model. By default, again, we just deselect, hide the feature, and just hide the shading. If I play the centerline simulation, by default we're going to start from one side and work our way across. Again, that's not ideal in this particular situation. So with the flow line type toolpaths, we have the same option under the surface control. In this case, we only have a single surface because we're only projecting one surface in this case. And in this case, we've got our uh, out to in type operation. So I'm going to select my flow line surface. Say apply. This is starting from the outside to in. Say OK. Calculate that toolpath. We work our way in towards the center. like so. Final thing to do, let's just run a quick 3D simulation of all these operations. In this case we'll do the flow line and the ice line operation. In this case I'm going to clear and play the full sequence. So there's my roughing, followed by my rest roughing. grooving operation and then finally my flow line working from the outside in.